Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will talk about lake flow declarative pipelines. It's a new framework given by the Databricks. We'll try to understand what does it mean. Then we'll talk about like how it, it actually builds on top of delta life tables. We'll also talk about like why and when you should choose it. Okay. And how it is different from the existing uh, frameworks as of now. We'll also talk about its limitations. And we'll also talk about like why companies started using it. Okay. So let's get started. Let's first try to understand this terminologies, right, which they used to create this framework. So the first word in they used in the terminology is the lake flow. The second one is declarative. And the third one is the pipeline, which is self-explanatory. So if I talk about the lake flow, I can again divide this word into two different categories. Lake means the storage and flow means the movement of data. So whenever we are talking about the lake flow, it means we are trying to understand how the data is moving inside a storage system. Okay. Now, when I talk about movement, let me just clarify. I'm talking about the different layers where it generally goes. So when the data got ingested from the source, it generally move into multiple layers. For an example, as a Madeleine architecture, we generally use bronze, silver, and gold. So the data will keep on moving from bronze to silver and from silver to gold, and then mostly, if required, reporting. Okay, I hope this is clear now. So when we talk about the lake flow, it means the movement of data from source to the very end, or I can say to the target table. However, if I'm talk, if I if we, if you take a look to this much this uh, diagram, right? We are only talking about this storage. We are not talking about the source itself, and that's what lake flow comes uh, as a feature, right? So in the lake flow architecture or in the lake flow declarative uh, framework, right? You can control source as well, and when I say control the Databricks will have complete control on the source system. Got it? And how it happens actually. So what with this new framework, right? What Databricks brought is basically a plug and play mechanism by which you can simply connect to a source system. You don't have to worry about all those third party applications or some other applications. You don't have to go with that hustle to integrate them, create uh, or manage them or orchestrate them or doing all the logging and monitoring and everything, right? Because now everything is there within the Databricks itself. They have given this plug and play feature where you can integrate with any of the source system like uh, you can think of SQL, Snowflake, and all. And then you can perform ingestion, either in form of streaming as well as in form of batch. Now, the best part is the Databricks workflow or the pipeline, right, will have this entire metadata of this source. It means you can do CDC as well. Okay. You can, if you want to add some security, some kind of a lineage, some kind of a, uh, a kind of a orchestration, right? Everything can be included. Okay. And that is the benefit which Lakeflow brings in. Now, for the sources where the Databricks has provided the plug and play mechanism, Right, those are called managed connect connectors, or you can say managed source, because we have out of the box feature to connect with them, and that is the benefit. 
and you can connect with them with the help of UI. If you are using Databricks UI, if you wanted to use Databricks CLI, you can use it. If you wanted to use APIs of the Databricks, yes, you can use it. So all these features are given and behind the scene, you will have the basic features like authentication, CDC, automated retry, schema evaluation, and long-term API maintenance. All those features will be available if you are going ahead with fully managed source systems or connectors. So I'll mention here, first one is fully managed connectors. And as of now, Few of them are in the uh, plug and play mode. But what if you wanted to connect to some other source systems which are not or which are not coming as a part of the as a as a part of uh, out of the box feature of the Databricks or the Lake Flow declarative pipelines? In that case, you can have again the same ones which we generally do, right? The custom pipelines like we were using some kind of a tools and all those things, right? So we can utilize the same way again, and we can have our custom pipelines. Now, I hope this makes sense, right? Why we are calling lake flow, because this is what making most of the differences. Now, if I talk about the declarative, right? This is not a new word because we already gone through this word in Delta Live table tutorial. Okay, so if you don't know about this, I mean like I'm going to explain here as well, but if you wanted to go and check more in detail, by the time I'm coming up with the new videos, you can go and check my previous videos related to Delta Life tables. And you will have a clear understanding what declarative means. So if I have to define declarative in one word, right? In one word, what I'll say is declarative means we are just defining our goals or your goals and rest of the things will be taken care by the framework itself. Okay, so now this is what declarative means. It means a function is already there because we are talking, we are saying this is a framework, right? So when we say framework, it means there will be some predefined functions, there will be some predefined standards. And if you wanted to call those functions, you have to call them as an annotation. And these annotations are actually called as a declarative framework. It's a way to declare a function and call that function. These functions in the native Python called as runnable functions sorry, callable functions. You can go and check how you can create your own callable function. Once you create a callable function, you can simply use that function with the help of at the rate on top of some other function. Let's say you have a function dot uh, move data, something like that. On top of this, you call one of the data quality, let's say, filter null or something. Don't go with the actual words as of now. I'm just giving you an example, okay? Filter word, filter null. So what it will do while running this function, right? It will also take care of this function. It will call this function as an annotation and run it. So that the data will be filtered wherever we have the null records. And that's how declarative from uh, declarative terms come into the picture. Now, what is pipeline? When I talk about the pipeline again, it's an end-to-end -end flow which is being used for the orchestration, this entire process. Now, if I talk about like how this pipeline is different from the, the previous ones, right? Or the existing ones, or we can say them procedural processing. So one is procedural processing and the other one you can say declarative processing. 
now how they are different i think you you are pretty much aware now so if i have to define declarative means and the procedural means so first start with the procedural it means you need to explicitly create functions and sequence of operations okay and it will be good if you have a really um, if you don't have any characters maybe you can go ahead and use it right in case of no connectors available now what is declarative as we have gone through declarative means you just specify what you are looking for instead of actually doing it okay so you are instructing the the framework like what is your goal so same thing define your goal and then the framework will take care of it also it will help you to understand or it will help you to optimize your functions your uh, complexities right it will help it basically and you don't have to rewrite this entire code from the scratch so that is the benefit of a declarative framework so in the procedural framework you will have some uh, complete control you can think of right but in declarative you will not have complete control because there are standards which needs to be followed correct now apart from this we can talk about like what is the difference between the jobs what is the difference between the workflows right how they are different and what all tables we can create what all features it provides but the best part is this framework right as i said it is completely free and this is available in databricks premium plan and it is completely free right so you can just log in and you can start exploring it okay you will have some sample data set as well there so don't worry about the data sets you will have it everything there and you can use it now enough of the benefit right there must be some limitations as well correct so we need to look into the limitation part as well like what kind of limitations are there so i'll scroll down i'll write limitations so the first limitation will be like maximum 2000 concurrent tasks can be run now the second part is in a workspace right you can have up to 1000 10000 jobs only you cannot create more than 10000 jobs remember this in single workspace and the third part is you will have your job limits right so in one task you can have 100 100 jobs basically and in terms of limitation we have 12000 as a limit we can only run these many jobs so i hope this will give you some background like what this lake flow declarative pipeline is how exactly it is being used or even like what does it actually stands for what are benefit it provides and all those things okay so thank you thanks for watching this video we'll meet in the next video and i'll show you like how we can practically implement it thank you bye